My name is uh, Senator Steve Gallardo, uh, District 13, Southwest Phoenix. Uh, first of all, let me uh, say one thing to the, uh, the folks that are behind me. Uh, let me welcome you to your state capitol, a new capitol, a new environment here at the Arizona State Senate. Uh, today, the governor signed uh, the canvas on the recall election that happened on November 8th. I think the message was loud and clear that the people in District 18 wanted a new direction, wanted a new tone here at the state capitol. The air of divisiveness, the air of uh, division is over. We want to be able to focus on those issues. They want us, as legislators, to focus on those issues that are most important to the state of Arizona. That's jobs, the economy, that's education. Those are the priorities of the state of Arizona. The voters sent a loud message in District 18 that they wanted a new direction in Arizona, and today is the first day for that new direction. I want to now turn the podium over to, uh, to the chairman of the Citizens for Better Arizona, Chad Snow. Say first of all uh, that today the, the main reason we're here today is to celebrate the voters out there in uh, Mesa sent a very strong message that the people of Arizona still have the power to hold their elected officials accountable and I think that's one of the main uh, main reasons we're here to celebrate uh, many people have asked us over the last two weeks what are you going to do now what are you going to do about Jam Brewer about Sheriff Arpaio and we think the appropriate response to that is not what are we going to do what are they going to do what are they going to do to respond to the message uh, that has been sent by the voters? That the voters here in Arizona, it's been sent time and time again with J.D. Hayworth, with Andrew Thomas, with Russell Pierce, that the voters here want their elected officials not to focus on divisive wedge issues like immigration. They want their uh, elected leaders to focus on the things that the senator here talked about, which is education, job creation, and the economy. And so we call on Senator, on, excuse me, on Governor Jam Brewer, come back from your book tour, come back to Arizona and focus on things that are important. We call on Gerard, Joe Arpaio, no amount of uh, arresting landscapers every few days can cover the fact that your record on law enforcement has been brutal. And so I want to turn the time over now uh, to Mary Lou Bechter, who is one of our volunteers from uh, Legislative District 18. Hello, my name is Mary Lou Thatcher. I live in District 18, and I am a Republican. As a Republican, I could uh, vote uh, for this recall very much. I had seen Russell Pierce, in I was a precinct committee person, and I saw what he did and talked, and I would go home and rant and rave to my husband oh, blah, for 30 blah. minutes. And that was why I would not, uh, I stopped being a precinct committee person. I do believe in having someone that is willing to work on more than one issue. I did not like seeing the education committee, I'm a retired teacher, and I did not like to see the, the things that were happening to the Mesa schools, they had to turn off a lot of t uh, people. They're, those people are, uh, we're talking about people losing, Well, the schools have lost a lot of people because of the amount of uh, reduction that they gave to there. So we have more un unemployed people. One of my daughter's friends was out of work for a year and a half before she found another job that was not, it was in a different type of education, not in the classroom where she really liked to work. That's one thing that I can say. I think that we are tired of hearing the things that were nasty to people. We do not like to hear things that are not true. We are trying our best to be a good thing for the state of Arizona. I was originally in Kansas. They have a book out, What's Wrong with Kansas? There will be a book coming out before too long 
what's wrong with Arizona. So those are the things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Barras, uh, co-founder and president of Citizens for Better Arizona. So since that historic event on November 8th, where voters sent a very powerful message, we've been getting lots of messages of people like, oh, let's recall Jan Brewer, let's recall Sheriff Rob Powell, let's recall. There's kind of this frenzy about recalling people. Let's just look at the facts for a second, the numbers. To recall a governor of the state, you need 432,020 votes. Signatures, imagine that, 432,000. So for it to even qualify, you're talking bringing in upwards of 700,000. So this is not something you just flip a switch on and just do. But because we're, our job is to really listen to the citizens of Arizona. So on our website, citizensforbetterazine.org, if you click on volunteer, you can, there's a thing there, a box that says, if there is a recall of Jan Brewer, I want to be one of 5,000 citizens. One of 5,000 that agreed to collect 100 signatures for that recall, if that happens. So we're going to let this decision be on the voters and now the citizens of Arizona see if they want that type of recall. As you know, for Sheriff Arpaio, there's already an election scheduled for next year. So it wouldn't even be smart strategic to launch that type of recall, but we're going to do something else specific to get to about him because of his behavior. So like our chairman just mentioned, what's going to, what's the, what are they going to do next? We're asking for two things from the governor today. Two things. Given the outreach, the overreach she did in terms of intervening in the Independent Redistricting Count Commission, taking out the independent votes, taking out the independent vote voice, right? Oh, who represent over, check this out now, uh, one million independent voters registered. They're the fastest growing segment demographic in the state of Arizona. From January to December of this year, about 30,000 people, that increased by 30,000 new voters who registered as independent. As the Democrats actually lost 25, 30,000, the Republicans lost about 24,000. They're growing. And so we're saying she overreached and she's behaving extremely to kind of control that process. We want a, want a public apology from the governor. That she will leave her hands off this process and she will respect the voters. The second thing we're asking her to do, because she has so much time to call, call a special session so they can intervene and undermine this process, she can tour on her book for her own, own benefit. We're asking her to call a special session. This is the week of Thanksgiving. We're getting to the holiday season to extend those unemployment benefits for those 15,000 Arizonans who cannot find work, right? Other citizens of other states are benefiting from that money, our money, our tax on dollars. And, and this just seems that we want her to do that. Call a special session, Governor, and work your colleagues, work the new leadership, and extend those benefits to tens of thousands of unemployed Arizonans who can't find work in this hard economy. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Lilia Alvarez, another co-founder of Citizens Arizona, to talk about specifically ah. Sheriff Arpaio and what's going to happen. Because we see Sheriff Arpaio using the same tactics, calling people extremists, liberals, you know, coming after him now on this fake recall, which no one's even declared. Because we have him doing that type of here, because we have him declaring something not even true, and because we heard so much about a sheriff's posse, he talks about those things. We've heard about the pink underwear, we heard about the tents, all those different things. Today we're announcing the creation for the very first time of a citizen's posse to take on a whole Sheriff Arpaio accountable. Unlike the sheriff's posse, unlike, unlike the sheriff's posse, you know, we don't have a badge and a gun. 
You know, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing to have the sheriff declare on camera that he has a badge and a gun. That's what you're supposed to have when you're a sheriff, a badge and a gun. But our, our folks, the Citizens Posse, we have heart, we have determination, and we have passion. And we're going to work together the next few months to hold this sheriff accountable, to make sure that this is the last year that Sheriff Arpaio will be sheriff in this county in Maricopa. So again, on our website at citizensforabetteraz.org, under volunteer, you can sign up for that Citizens Posse. We will announce the progress of that at our founding convention in January. On January 8th, one day before the legislative session opens, we'll be announcing how, how the process is going and citizens interested in one, a recall of Governor Brewer, and two, the Citizens Posse to hold Sheriff Rapallo accountable. But that will stop here and take any questions. So you are asking for a recall. You are going after a recall of the governor. No, what we're responding to is that we've got so many messages from people via Facebook, email, they want to recall Brewer, but well, we're putting the work back on them. If you want to do that work, sign up. We need, we need 5,000 people to make an amendment to get 100 signatures, and in 30 days we'll have 500,000. But that's not our decision to make. It's up to the citizens of this state. They believe that's necessary. If she doesn't tone down her behavior and quit meddling in the Independent Registering Commission, if she can't feel for unemployment benefits, I mean, just, wouldn't it be nice for one second for an elected official? Because I tell you what, if those benefits are extended, I'm not going to benefit. Senator Gallardo's not going to benefit. Chairman uh, Snow's not going to benefit. The governor's not going to benefit. But people will benefit. Citizens who need resources will benefit. Let's see if they can act on the on the behalf of citizens who most need that aid and see if something's going to happen. So we're going to be watching their behavior and moving forward from there. Randy, how is what you're doing any different than what the governor is doing? You're you're simply threatening. I don't think it's a threat. I think we're calling people to action. I don't think we threaten a recall today. We're asking people if they want to do it, they can do it. Um, and our sense of no, we don't make, we actually fall through. If we declared a recall day, we'd fall through on that, but we're not declaring that. So it's not a threat. It's basically, we're responding to the call. People want that. You can't just flip a switch. You can't just recall a governor because you don't like her or you don't feel bad. There's got to be really substantive things there, right? This thing that happened with Russell Pearson happened just because of just a chance. It was it's the first yeah, time in the yeah. history. It happened because yeah, of his own yeah. behavior, right? And so what you're seeing here around us, you're seeing people representative Sheriff Arpaio and that type of politics, yelling, misbehaving, that's fine. But, but I'll tell you what, they're going to have their day too. Randy, are, hey, are you going to be a candidate for office next year? This seems like a lot of stuff to do. You know, you know how it really concerns me because I think I've answered that question before. You answered it, you, you, you're mock, first of all, you mocked a recall. The whole way it's on, didn't take it seriously. Second, when I went in there with an unemployment check for the president, you mocked us then and said, oh, Rand, you're only running for office. And now you have the audacity again to question that. I am not running for office and don't plan on running for office. Next question. Let me give you an example. We're talking about now because we're not limited to the LDA team. This is a countywide initiative. We're talking engaging people at school boards, at city council levels, moving resolutions all across this county, having elected officials sign on and they don't support his behavior as sheriff and they want to see a change, right? So it's not just us just knee-jerk reaction saying, oh, the sheriff needs to retire, he needs to, he needs to go. We're saying, look, let's change the behavior. Let's change the tone. All the latest polls show that we're not fixated on immigration anymore. We're fixated on the jobs and the economy. They're still beating the same drum they did last year. And look what happened to Senator Pierce. Gone. And so it's almost just a warning to him. You know, work with us. Work with other people. Work with communities that are suffering. Quit walking around saying you have a badge and a gun. We know. You know, unfortunately, tens of thousands of other Arizonans have guns. And so it's not a, it's a big deal. We want responsible government. The last thing I want to say on this thing is that Sheriff Arpaio walks around like he owns that position. It's a privilege for him to be in an elected position. And so it's up to us as, as citizens and as, elect, as voters to determine whether he deserves another shot at there or not. But he does not own that. He is not forever the king of sheriff in, in Maricopa County. Who do you support for sheriff? Right now, in terms of speaking on behalf of Sensible Arizona, we have not even uh, entertained that question. Okay, so then who's better than Sheriff Arpaio? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. 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 right. Well, I'll, let, me just, let me just say one thing. Everyone, everyone says, oh, because when we started, the just to refresh people's memory. When we started the recall, we started the recall, they said, who is your candidate? There was no Jerry Lewis when we started the recall. This is not about a candidate who's better. Not, are we better as a community? Are we better citizens? Do we have higher standards for a sheriff, right? Other than this whole thing, wild, wild west mentality. I think we're better than that. So our belief is that if we move forward, we create a space, hopefully someone will, will go up. And I'm not, I don't get driven by a candidate. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, too, we were here on January 6th having a very similar conversation directed at Senator Pierce. And we told him, focus on jobs, 
education and the economy. And he ignored that. And he obviously did that at his own peril. And I think uh, the same message can go to Joe Arpaio and Jan Brewer. We're telling you, people don't want to focus on, on one issue. Don't hide behind one issue anymore. Focus on these other things. I think, well, not, not legislative issues, but if, if you look at the things he's done over the last couple of years, it, he's wasted over $100 million of taxpayer funds. That was uncovered through an audit that the Board of Supervisors did. 83% of the crimes that are committed in his jurisdiction go completely uninvestigated. Those are the things we want him to focus on. We want him to focus on doing his job, just like Jan Brewer. We want her to focus on doing her job. What specifically can he do to satisfy you? I'm sorry, what's that? What specifically can he do to satisfy you? Well, I think he could answer those questions. He could he could become more fiscally accountable. He could answer the question, why did you have to fire your three top deputies for corruption and claim that you knew nothing that was going on? And more specifically, I think he could start to do what the sheriff is elected to do, which is to enforce the law and to go after real criminals. I mean, it just, you get to a point where you're tired of seeing a press release about someone who's doing his job. Every time you make a bus, you gotta have a press release. That's your job, you're supposed to enforce the law. I mean, everyone knows that. But it's yeah. when you start to really take the resources and build your own base of power, when you have pressure, when you have over $50 million, 50, let's say $50 million in legal payouts for behavior, you didn't even get to a court of law because you had to settle it before you went to court because it's so bad. You want to get rid of it. Fifty million dollars. What are you announcing exactly? Um, is this a, a group that's going to prevent him from being reelected? Is that what your what the posse is? Well, ab absolutely. It's a way to hold him accountable. And part of that, if he refuses to heed the call, he will be. You know, we will mobilize our resources to make sure this is his last year as sheriff of Maricopa County. So this so, is not a recall per se. Well, in our terms, the way we say is that the recall date's already been set. It's November 2012. It's a general election. He's already on the ballot. And we're going we're gonna to be there to make that happen. How many people are in this posse so far? We just announced we it. They're all going to sign it right here today. <laughs> we, we, just to that point, though, we have we we engaged over a thousand people in the Pierce recall. Uh, over a thousand people donated funds. I mean, we have already several thousand people that have become engaged in this type of effort of the people saying we're going to hold our elected officials accountable. And so, I mean, there's no exact number, but it is several thousand people that have already participated. And this is fine. We know people are not taking this serious. That's great. They didn't take it serious before. We know people around, oh, we love Sheriff Arpaio. That's great. But I can assure you right now, we get hundreds of messages of people who are terrified, who don't like the Sheriff Arpaio, do not like what's happening in Arizona, and we'll have our day. So we're just putting on notice that we want to see change behavior. This is not about calling him names. It's not about calling the governor names. We want more accountability. It's about basically, at a very fundamental level, citizens holding their elected officials to a higher standard. And that's what happened. Senator Pierce refused to rise to that, he's gone. We'll see what happens with Governor Brewer, we'll see what happens with Sheriff Arpaio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have, we have, again, we have no idea, we can't determine the success, that's not what motivates us. What motivates us is that, for us here, we just had enough. Arizona will either change or stay the same based on what we choose to do. So the recall of Senator Pierce was not a novel idea. That idea has been on the books as a constitution for 100 years. What was new is that people came together and said, you know what, we're tired of it. He works for us. And so Sheriff Rappel always says, oh, you're my boss? Well, we're his boss. And we're saying we're not satisfied with the job and we want to see some changes. All right, what's it? Where you at? Can you start signing this, please? This is part of the citizen's posse. Another hogwash.